Have you been dealing with a covert narcissist? Covert narcissists are actually the worst. I know I've dealt with them myself, several of them for sure, but at least two that I've had to deal with in my personal life and I know how they are. So did you know that they actually sabotage their own lives? I'm gonna tell you about that in this video. Okay, so I'm Rebecca Zung. I am an attorney. I'm also a narcissist negotiation expert. I've helped thousands and thousands of people through my law practice, and I want to help you too. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell. If you want a free ebook on how to actually negotiate powerfully with narcissists, I've got that for you too. It's literally helped thousands of people get that at crushmydeal.com. It's a totally amazing, amazing, amazing ebook. You can get that at crushmydeal.com. All right. I'm going to go through six ways that covert narcissists actually sabotage their own lives in this video. So you're going to want to watch all the way to the end. It's pretty incredible because I know you think that they're pretty stellar at sabotaging your life because they do. It's kind of like death by a thousand cuts. Like, you know, nobody else sees it. And even you kind of don't see it all at once. It's, it's like that frog that's sitting in the pot and you don't realize you're being boiled until you've already been boiled. Have you ever heard that metaphor before? Okay, let me just kind of go for, through it. So if for those of you who haven't heard it before, basically it's, you're in this pot of water. It's the frog that's in this pot of water and the water is cold. And what happens is the frog doesn't realize as the water is getting warmer and warmer and warmer and they don't get out. So they just allow themselves to be boiled. And that's what happens with those of us who are dealing with covert narcissists because it's such a slow thing that you don't really realize what's happening until it's already been done. Six ways that covert narcissists sabotage their own lives. They actually do sabotage their own lives. I'm going to go through that with you right here. Number one is that they can't control their own emotions. A lot of times they do in front of other people, but there are times that they literally snap or they, they say things that are wrong or they do things that are wrong in front of the wrong people or in front of you. And then things just go wrong for them and they end up sabotaging their own lives and they end up actually regretting what they've done or they sabotage relationships or they sabotage situations for themselves. They sabotage business situations for themselves because they can't control their emotions. I actually saw an interview one time with a guy who was a neurosurgeon, like a neurologist, and he was talking about how people's brains can be rewired. And, you know, we actually are just kind of a CPU up here with our brains, you know, we think that we are who we are. And there's actually kind of this separation between who we are as a soul and who we are as this, this programmed thing up on top of our neck up here, because the thing up on top of our neck can actually be rewired. It's kind of scary, but it is true. It's just a set of neurons that are just firing and wiring together that's been programmed over time because of a, a set of stimuli has been presented to us and, and we drew conclusions. But there's this cerebral cortex that's like the reasonable part. And then there's this limbic brain that's kind of the older part of our brain, the older part of our development as humans that is ruling our emotional part of us. And if we can't get a, a, a hold of that, and what, what this neurosurgeon was saying is that the most important skill that we can possess as humans 
is this ability to be able to control our emotions. That is the most important skill that we can have as humans, because if you can't get a, a, a hold of your emotions, then, you know, it wreaks havoc in your lives. And that's what happens with narcissists. You know, they very often can't get a hold of their emotions because their limbic system, their limbic brain wasn't fully developed because of the trauma that was caused to them as children. So they can't control their emotions. That's number one. Number two, is that they underestimate their supply by assuming that they're weak. What happens with narcissists in general is they mistake the fact that you are a good person, that you're an empathic person, that you're a generous person, that you're a kind person for weakness. They collapse those things together. They actually think that because you're all of those things, you know, you're a kind person, you're a good person, that that means that you're a weak person. And obviously, you know, that that's not true. You can be a kind person and still be a strong person, that you can be a generous person and still be a strong person, that you can be a wonderful human being and still be a strong person. I mean, look at Mother Teresa, for example. She's in their pillar of kindness in Calcutta, taking care of lepers and the things that she was doing on a daily basis. She was two feet tall or whatever she was. And, you know, clearly she was a strong, strong, strong person. You know, I don't think anybody would have said that she was weak. You know, they underestimate their supply by assuming that they're weak. So that's number two. Number three is kind of the opposite. They overestimate themselves. And boy, do I see this a lot in negotiations. They really overestimate themselves. They really believe, and and this is you know, kind of goes hand in hand with underestimating you, by the way, you really overestimate themselves and their lies. This is where your leverage is definitely going to come in because they lie, lie, lie all the time, all over the place. And they don't assume that you are going to ever stand up to them, that you're going to go behind them and find their copies of their lies or figure it out or actually document it, or actually put it together, or actually create summaries of it, or exhibits of it, or stand up to them, or create a strategy or leverage or present it to them in a way that's organized, in a way that actually, the way I teach you how to do it in my slay methodology which is strategy, leverage, anticipate, and focus on you. I actually teach you how to present in an organized negotiation fashion so that you can actually be the stronger one. But they underestimate you. They overestimate themselves. They don't anticipate that their lies are ever going to catch up with them. Unfortunate for them wonderful for you. Let yourself be underestimated, by the way. You can't have an ego in this. Allow their ego to be their downfall. As long as you give them rope, they will hang themselves with it. They will. Give them rope to hang themselves. Give them rope to hang themselves. It's a good thing. Number four, They actually believe that you will continue to take their abuse because you always have. They just think that you'll stick, stick around and they are genuinely shocked when you don't, you know, even if you say, I'm not going to put up with this anymore, or even if they say, I don't think you will, when you actually stop doing that, when you actually put your foot down, when you actually start pivoting, when you actually start shifting that dynamic and actually start standing up to them, they are seriously like, whoa, you know, and they, they will start to have a meltdown. 
initially and they will start to have a tantrum initially but you can't be swayed by that you can't worry about that that's terrorist tactics it's okay you will survive it's like a two-year-old having a tantrum on the floor you got to allow the two-year-old to have the tantrum it will get worse before it gets better but that's okay because eventually it does get better so that's number four Number five is they hold grudges. They hold big time grudges. They don't forgive. It makes for them to have lonely lives and it holds them away from people and it sabotages their relationships with people and it doesn't allow for them to have good connections with people. It keeps them away from people who might actually have truly loved them, which is very, very sad. Narcissists inherently don't believe that they're truly lovable and so they don't feel good about themselves inside. They end up being able to have good relationships with people anyway, any narcissist at all. That's why you can't go down with the sinking ship. You got to move on. And that's why I want you to put in the comments right now, I'm moving on. Put that in the comments right now, I'm moving on on because it's time for you to move on. That is number five. And I said I was going to give you six ways that covert narcissists sabotage their own lives. And I've given you five so far, five ways that nar uh, covert narcissists sabotage your own lives, which means there's one more left. That is that they have to be the victim. They have to be the victim regardless of whether or not it costs them a relationship. I've seen them allow it to cost them family relationships. Then it makes them look like a victim, you know, because they'd rather be a victim than actually even have a, a real relationship, which is super sad. You know, they, they'd rather have people feel sorry for them, have people go, oh, that's terrible. I can't believe this. I can't believe that this would happen to you. than actually have a real relationship with members of their own family because they'd rather have the attention from other outside sources feeling sorry for them. That's how sad and pathetic they can be. Because they need to be the victim. And that really sabotages their own lives. That's how empty they feel. Instead of actually having a genuine, loving, whole, complete relationship that's filled with joy and light and peace and really experiencing the wholeness of what life has to offer. They're down in this low level vibration of sadness and guilt and bad feelings. It's just horrible. They do everything they can to get sympathy from other people and, and making poor choices and talking bad about others. And, you know, their lives are just always this woe is me and I mean, that's total self-sabotage. Who wants to live in that space? Not me. That's the worst way that covert narcissists can sabotage their own lives. That's a space you don't want to live in. You do not want to live in. You want to live in a place where you are living in feeling fulfilled. Life is so short it will be over before you know it. I mean, when you think about how little life you actually have, I heard a, a statistic one time that if you subtract out the time you're sleeping and the time you're eating and the time you're driving and the time you're actually doing all the things you have to do, it's like how much time you actually have left on this planet. I, I think for me, I have left like, I don't know, eight years or something. It's not very much. And I sure as heck don't want to spend it feeling anything 
but vibrance and lightness and joy and waking up in the morning, feeling excited about life and happiness and peace and fulfillment. And that's what I want for you too. So that's why I invite you to grab my crush, my negotiation prep worksheet to get started if you need it, which is 15 pages ebook, crushmydeal.com. Join my free private Facebook group, Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. Subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell so that you can get my free information, which I upload every single day. And the next video that I suggest that you watch here is the one thing covert narcissists always do is you're going to want to watch that because if you're dealing with a covert narcissist, you're going to want to know about the one thing that they always do. That'll be the next video that you watch here. And remember that today is a great day to start negotiating your best life. They don't, they only win if you give in, right? So I'll see you in that next video. The one thing covert narcissists always do. I wish you peace and love.